हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू द एपिसोड नाइन ऑफ मेडिसिन पीवाई की टॉपिक सीरीज एंड दी टॉपिक इज जीबीएस सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो द पीवाई की क्वेश्चन विच केम इन 2019 नाइनटीन दे आर एज फॉलोज नंबर वन ऑल आर ट्रू अबाउट जीबीएस एक्सेप्ट इन्फ्लोमेटरी कंडीशन डिसेंडिंग पैरालिसिस इज सीन प्लाज्मा फेरिसिस इज अ ट्रीटमेंट मेथड एंड इट्स अ डीमाइलिनेटिंग डिसऑर्डर सेकेंड क्वेश्चन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज द मोस्ट कॉमन टाइप ऑफ जीबीएस एक्यूट मोटर एक्जोनल न्यूरोपैथी एक्यूट इन्फ्लेमेटरी डीमाइलिनेटिंग पॉली न्यूरोपैथी एक्यूट मोटर सेंसरी एक्जोनल न्यूरोपैथी एंड मिला फिशर सिंड्रोम सो इट इज अमन ए आई डी पी अमसन एंड मिला फिशर सिंड्रोम सो टू एंसर सच टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन यू हैव टू हैव अ थॉरो आइडिया अबाउट जी बी एस बिकॉज दे आस्किंग यू अबाउट द फैक्ट्स विच इज ट्रू एंड विच इज फॉल्स सो विल क्विकली गो थ्रू द फैक्ट्स एंड द इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स अबाउट जी बी एस एंड विल समराइज इट इन द एंड एंड देन विल कम बैक टू द क्वेश्चन सो जी बी एस it is an autoimmune disorder that is the body is attacking its own cells it is acute progressive and it's a inflammatory demyelination of peripheral polyneuropathy that means mainly the peripheral motor and sensory nerves and the nerve roots are affected the main mechanism behind is the molecular mimicry that is the cross reacting antigens they attack the body's own cells and myelin being the most common also in 70% of cases there is always a antecedent infection present that means there's a preceding infection before the gbs sets in so these are certain triggers uh, like uh, campylobacter jejuni most common uh, associated with diarrhea then uh, cytomegalovirus epstein barr virus mycoplasma hepatitis a hepatitis b hiv and zika virus so this campylobacter jejuni most commonly associated this could be a potential mcq Uh, coming to the picture on the right hand side uh, as we see the campylobacter jejuni is a trigger uh, what it does is it it triggers the immune response where the cross reactive antibodies ultimately formed they attack the myelin sheet which could lead to aidp or it could also attack the axonal membrane which could lead to aman or amsan subtypes so coming to the types of uh, gbs this is important because these are potential questions it can be broadly divided into demyelinating axonal and regional gbs syndromes where demyelinating is the acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy that is the aidp and it is also the most common type then axonal uh, includes acute motor axonal neuropathy and acute motor sensory axonal neuropathy that is amman and amsan type and in regional gbs syndromes miller fisher syndrome is important and others are pure sensory forms gbs with severe bulbar and facial paralysis and ophthalmoplegia with anti gq1 antibodies as a part of a severe motor sensory gbs so these are the certain uh, subtypes so in this image uh, we can see the right hand side it's a normal motor nerve and um, in the aidp part the antibodies that is cross antibodies they are attacking the myelin membranes hence uh, it's a demyelinating polyneuropathy and the image in the middle it shows the antibodies attacking the axonal membranes ultimately leading to aman and amsan subtypes uh, coming to the clinical features uh, radicular pain or back pain and tingling with numbness are generally the first features to appear then this is a very important point to note where weakness starts in the lower limb which progresses towards upper limb and then the brain stem so it's a ascending type of uh, paralysis which is noted then respiratory muscle involvement is generally seen 30% of cases then areflexia flaccidity paraparesis progressing to quadriparesis these are certain important clinical features sensory signs are generally minimal ans involvement is seen bowel bladder may be present no cerebellar findings and no higher mental functions involvement are noted cranial nerve involvement like uh, initially 9th 10th 11th are more involved then 7th nerve and followed by 3rd 4th and 6th nerve so if you see the picture uh, always the hands and feet begin to have tingling sensation which are the initial symptoms then the muscle weakness sets in uh, which is generally on the both sides of the body making it difficult to climb stairs or walk it generally starts with the lower limb it progresses towards the upper limb also it may involve the respiratory system in 30% of cases within the first two weeks that could ultimately lead to patient needing uh, ventilatory support so these clinical features are important because these will be the clues in the clinical question or this could also be given as the statements whether it is true or it is false Uh, now the diagnostic criteria so the features which is required for a diagnosis one is the clinical feature we just discussed that is progressive weakness of both legs and arms and areflexia these are features required for diagnosis then certain other clinical features are there which is supportive of diagnosis like if there is a progression over days to 4 weeks then relative symmetry or signs mild sensory symptoms and signs 
cranial nerve involvement by facial palsies then recovery beginning 2 to 4 weeks after progression ceases autonomic dysfunction and absence of fever at the onset these are certain clinical features which are supportive of diagnosis then coming to the lab criteria uh, one is elevated csf protein with less than 10 cells per microliter this is one of the features and another feature is electrodiagnostic study which shows a feature of nerve conduction slowing or a block Coming to the diagnosis, so electrodiagnosis, this is the most sensitive test in evaluating GBS. Certain features which could be found in electrodiagnosis of a GBS patient is motor conduction block, prolonged distal latencies, temporal dispersion, slowing of nerve conduction and increased F wave latency. Then lumbar puncture can be done where albuminocytologic dissociation is an important finding, increased CSF protein and less than 10 cells per cubic millimeter are certain other findings of CSF. And lastly, detection of certain autoantibodies that helps in the diagnosis. Now coming to the autoantibody in different subtypes. So in AIDP, anti-GM1 autoantibody is found. In Aman and Amsan subtypes, anti-GD1A autoantibody is found. And in Miller-Fisher syndrome, anti-GQ1B autoantibodies are found. So these are all potential MCQs which can come in the exam. Coming to the treatment, treatment options available are IVIG and plasma exchange. Uh, the point to be noted here is there is no much role of steroids here and other supportive treatment has to be given to the patient. So let us summarize the entire GBS with the help of this picture where it is an acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. The symptoms begins with paresthesias in the hands and the feet and it is symmetrical muscle weakness which usually begins in the legs and then ascends. So this is an important point to note. Then most of the cases are preceded by an infection such as Campylobacter jejuni or enteritis that is a trigger is present. There is absent or depressed deep tendon reflexes. In 30% of cases, severe respiratory muscle weaknesses may be found, ultimately uh, leading to ventilatory support. And the treatment options available for GBS are the plasma exchange and the IVIG. So this is a very good picture. You can keep a screenshot of it so that you can revise it later. So let us go back to the questions now. So the question which came, so all are true about GBS except. Now we know it is an inflammatory condition, so this is true. Descending paralysis is seen. Uh, this is a false statement because uh, we saw that it is ascending paralysis like it starts with the legs and then it progresses upwards. So this looks like the wrong statement. Uh, option C, plasma paralysis is the treatment method. Yes, this is correct. And option D, demyelinating disorder. This is also true. So answer here is option B, uh, that is descending paralysis is seen. No, it is ascending paralysis which is seen. Uh, second question, which of the following is the most common type of GBS? So options are Aman, AIDP, Amsan and Miller-Fisher syndrome. So we now know the most common type of GBS is AIDP. And so this is a very straightforward question and the answer is very simple. So that is all about GBS. I hope guys this video was useful and uh, you are enjoying this revision series. If you have any doubts, you can comment down below or you can also DM me in my Instagram page and I'll be happy to help you all out. If you're new to my channel, do subscribe. I will be coming with many more such content. Till then, keep studying, keep revising. And I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.